Well, we haven't gotten a whole lot of new music from the retro prog or the symphonic retro prog outfits, um, and I've been craving something new from that side of the progressive rock sphere. And uh, yeah, this one kind of wet my whistle, so let's dive into it. You Have It All by Lobate Scarb, and I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, so Lobate Scarb is a U.S. retro prog outfit. Uh, this is their second album following their 2012 release of Time and Space. So 10 full years between the two full-length albums. Now, they have been busy with other projects. Uh, they did Spirals and Portals back in 20, uh, 2019, uh, a little EP, just to kind of wet their whistle. Uh, and these guys are very similar to a lot of these kind of... Um, Retro prog outfits, uh, I'm thinking of bands like Unitopia or Magic Pie. You know, the one that kind of springs to my mind is like Spock's Beard, but kind of later Spock's Beard and even Pattern Seeking Animals. So if any of those are like, ooh, ding ding, I'm liking that, you're definitely going to like these guys. They kind of follow that same style, uh, that, stay, that same kind of essence within their music. And so, yeah, now we come into Have It All or You Have It All. And honestly, this one, much like some really good progressive rock, took its time to really warm up to me. You know, the first handful of listens of this, I was like, okay, it's very generic retro prog. It's ticking all the boxes. You know, you've got the two longer pieces, one almost 15 minutes and one over 17 minutes. Uh, you've got tracks that are split into two, uh, In the Night Part 1 and In the Night Part 2. And yeah, you're kind of getting that whole flavor. Uh, but after, you know, those first initial thoughts and I was allowing the album to digest, a lot of very interesting and very intricate movements kind of made themselves known. Now, this album does have a number of, I guess you could call them singles kind of leading this off. Uh, Nothing Wrong and Beautiful Night and our Test Tube Universe. Uh, these three tracks are very like modern retro prog kind of outfits. Like they feel like some of the leading singles off of like a Spock's Beard album past their self-titled uh, album. Uh, and even like the structure of this album kind of flows very well within like a Spock's Beard X, having like two long pieces, one in the middle, one at the end, uh, and having these like smaller pieces kind of sprinkled throughout. Like I love the fact that the album does open up with like a seven minute instrumental of conduit. And it really is a conduit for the music. It's almost like bringing the boys together. It's, it's a very good like introduction, but it's more than just like a prologue, a prelude or an intro. It really is its own standout track for opening up this album. And it really showcases and presents the listener with exactly what you're going to be expecting with this music. It's very punchy. It's very quick. It's very tight in its presentation. And I like how it moves from one sequence right into another, right into another without really missing a beat. And, you know, prog instrumentals are very hard to construct, especially at the very beginning, because you have all these ideas that you want to get through to introduce the listener to your album without it being essentially soup on a security board and just being spilling out everywhere. You really have to contain it and really like play around with it so that everything kind of works together. And I think that it does. And it flows right into uh, Nothing Wrong very, very well. It uses that momentum into Nothing Wrong to really punch out that flavor of sounds. Like I'm loving how driven and how focused that is. And again, once we get those vocals, and I haven't even listed the individuals that are found on this album, and I probably should do that. Uh, Adam Sears on the lead vocal, synths, and piano, and organs has so many, like, really great essence on there. Like, it feels very much like uh, Leonard from, uh, Todd Leonard from Spock's Beard and Pattern Sequin Animals. Like, his command of the vocals is very, very astute. Um as well as Andy Katz on the bass and vocals. His bass work on here reminds me of some of the better works that Billy Sherwood has. And speaking of Billy Sherwood, he actually provides the vocals on the bigger of the two tracks, or I guess one of the big two tracks of the title track, You Have It All. Uh, so yeah, and then filling out the actual like trio, we've got Peter Machinaki, I think it is, on uh, guitars. Uh, so these three individuals are like the main core for the band. And then they have a lot of people coming in to help kind of flush out the album proper. 
And I could really, really feel that because it does feel like, you know, there are a lot of different chefs and cooks in the kitchen without it feeling crowded, you know, because they only come on every once and again on different tracks and then kind of make sure that they leave providing enough room for everybody else to kind of play within. So within Nothing Wrong, I love that bass that really like brings this song together. You know, that really is the heartbeat for this. Now I will say that the lowest point on this album comes with the one-two punch of In The Night. Uh, I just feel like it's, uh, it's like very 80s, but not in a good sense. Like it's very like Yamaha keyboard, preset beat kind of flavor in that and i always get my back up whenever i hear one of those because i just feel like that preset beat is just so lazy and so lackluster like there are so much you could have done instead that helps to kind of fulfill the ideas that you have in your head and it's just a crutch that you don't really need now what it does do is it does sandwich the one the first big one and probably the best track off of this the title track of you have it all this 14 minutes goes by as though you're listening to a seven minute track. Uh, I love the builds. I love the climbs. I'm loving how big this is. Like, this is why I come to progressive rock. You know, this is exactly why I come to it because it has these big sounds, this big journey. It doesn't start off like right with a punch in the face. It allows you to explore the territory, explore the space. And so by the time we get to the big soundscapes and that big moments, it really allows you to kind of take stock and be like, yeah, we really traversed quite a bit of like area on this. And now we're really, really able to really enjoy it. It wasn't really too much to say about the fourth track of Lifeline. Uh, it was fine. You know, it kind of reminds me of the, um, uh, the Neil Morse track of Lifeline. And I mean, there is a lot of comparisons that you can make to Neil Morse on this album. It does have a lot of those same flavors on it. Um, and even with Beautiful Light and test our Test Tube Universe, I've already mentioned about these, and they're fine. Uh, the final track of Flowing Through the Change of Time, the 17 Minutes. Loving this track. I do wish that it did come together in something a little bit more exciting at the very, very end of this piece. Because 17 minutes is a lot of music to go through, and there are very, like, five distinct chapters within this track. And I, I just wish that there was... I know, a little bit more of a crescendo at the end like we had with You Have It All. Uh, and I really didn't quite feel it. Now, that being said, this track still provides, you know, 17 minutes of great prog. This is, again, why I come to it. It's got a lot of ebb and flow. It's got a lot of dips and dives. Each movement really does pass the baton on to the next to provide a really, really interesting kind of orchestration of sounds. Uh, loving the shifting pace, loving the different soundscapes on here. I just kind of wish that it converged into something more exciting by the end. That's really my only big gripe about this big track. So yeah, I mean, in the end, uh, You Have It All by Lobite Scarred it was a fantastic treat. You know, it was one that I listened so many times on Bandcamp that they really wouldn't let me listen to it again until I paid up. And I'm like, okay, okay, you got me at this point. I'll, I'll pony up the scratch and give you some uh, give you some money there because honestly, I've listened to this thing enough times, and it's it's the my favorite type of prog where the more you put into it, the more you get out of it, and that is really the key of why I've been really really enjoying this. So. Uh, this one gets the no seal of approval. I really, really like this. Uh, and I will say that You Have It All by Low Bite Scarp is one that I absolutely will download. Because I did. <laughs> and it's not one that, you know, I, I did only because I was literally forced to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a good time. It was one that I really enjoyed. Uh, it's It really satisfied my uh, retro symphonic prog itch that I've had lately. Yeah, go and check it out. Uh, I give it the no seal of approval. I think it's a really good treat. Um, probably the best retro prog that I've heard this year. Anyway, that's all I've got. What did you guys think about this record? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below. And uh, I think that's all I've got. Yeah, that's all I've got. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out. Mm -hmm.